squatting on the ground in front of a bicycle parked along an empty alley in Singapore, an elderly man carefully hammers a block of dry ice into smaller pieces. It stings, but I'm quite used to it. The man, who prefers to be known only by his last name, Liang, said in Mandarin. Most hawkers collect their ice cream and dry ice from wholesale distributors around the country. It's a windy, overcast Friday morning and Liang, who is in his 70s, is getting ready for work. Soon, he'll load his cooler with ice cream from the wholesale distributor next door before selling the treat to passers-by in the sweltering equator heat for about one Singapore dollar. 51 US dollar and 10 cents with only the shade of his bike's umbrella to keep him cool. Liang is one of Singapore's remaining traditional ice cream sellers and part of a bygone era. Up until the 1960s, Singapore was teeming with street hawkers, selling everything from shaved ice desserts to pork rib soup. Now, only about 150 of them are working on the streets today, largely due to strict regulations in the city-state. Unlike America's ice cream trucks, these hawkers in Singapore run their business on bikes, some of which aren't even motorized. The vehicles come attached with a cooler to store blocks of ice cream in an abundance of flavors. From the traditional chocolate, vanilla to the less common corn, or even the polarizing fruit, durian. Orders can be served in a cup, between two thin wafer biscuits, or, perhaps most recognizably, wrapped in a slice of rainbow-colored bread. For many Singaporeans, these traditional ice creams are an affordable, nostalgic treat. Buying one from one of Singapore's ice cream uncles is almost a rite of passage. But it's not easy being a traditional ice cream seller in Singapore, where street hawking is strictly regulated by the Singapore Food Agency SFA. In 1994, Street hawkers were licensed in a one-time exercise to control their numbers and no more licenses were issued after that, the SFA said in a statement. However, in the early 2000s, the street hawking scheme was reopened as a means to temporarily help those who are needy tight over their financial difficulties. These licenses are valid for one year but are non-transferable the SFA added. The older generation hawkers were previously issued with island-wide licenses, which enabled them to ply their trade anywhere in Singapore. Such as in tourist belts like Orchard Road, Kenneth Go, the third-generation owner of Chit Guan Hang, an ice cream distributor, said over email. However, the newer hawkers tend to be issued with localized licenses specific to the region where they live, Go added. In 2019, Channel News Asia reported that there were only 13 street hawkers left who were permitted to sell ice cream on any public land, per the SFA. This includes about seven sellers on Orchard Road. The street hawking scheme is intended to provide temporary assistance for the unemployed and is not a permanent solution for anyone trying to make a living, the SFA said. Today, if anyone approaches the SFA for a street hawking license, the SFA would connect them to the social service office to say if they require financial or employment assistance. The SFA did not respond to additional queries about the difference in license types. If new licenses are still being issued today, and whether it has plans to ensure the continuity of Singapore's ice cream hawking scene. The SFA also did not share the cost of these licenses. Although an old article published by Local Paper Today in 2014 reported that the licenses under the renewed street hawking scheme cost 120 Singapore dollars a year. One 80-year-old seller named Tan a hawk said he has been selling ice cream since 1967. He is set up on the city's popular shopping street Orchard Road most days of the week from 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. If I can finish selling early, I'll leave early, Tan said. Last week, 
A person saw him still set up and selling to a line of customers past 10.30 p.m. The minimum retirement age in Singapore is 63 years old. But Leong, Tang, and many other traditional ice cream sellers in the country find themselves working well into their golden years. The job is physically demanding, the old ice cream sellers carry heavy boxes and spend most of their 10-hour shifts on their feet. There's also barely any time for a break, especially for those on Orchard Road. Such was the case for an 82-year-old seller who prefers to be known by his last name Wang. His cart is located in front of Wisma Atria, a long-standing mall on the street. Barely 10 minutes after his giant red umbrella came on, a signal that he is open for business, a line formed in front of his cart. As he slides through a giant block of chocolate chip ice cream. It's getting harder to cut these frozen ice cream blocks. My wife is coming to help me later, she's got more strength. Wang said. I'm already old. Chon Yong Lang, another Orchard Road ice cream seller who has been in the business since the 1960s, thinks the industry will die out in a few years. It's tough doing this business, Chon, 78, said. Business is better if there are tourists. Indeed, most people who bought traditional ice creams on Orchard Road were tourists. Social media appears to be a major driver in the industry. A Filipino couple on their first visit to Singapore said they learned about the ice cream uncles through TikTok and wanted to try it out for themselves. And for many Singaporeans, these traditional ice cream sellers are an important part of the local heritage. I'll try to buy ice cream and support them when I can, Darren Tan. A 26-year-old local, said. It'll be sad if there are no more ice cream seller uncles in the future. There are not many places in Singapore where you can find such affordable and nostalgic ice cream. Over the past decade, Go has also witnessed a steady decline in the number of ice cream hawkers in the country. It would be very sad if we are no longer able to hear the familiar sound of the ice cream bells ringing in our estate in the near future. He added. Meanwhile, Chon, who is nearing 80, said he plans to continue selling ice cream for a few more years. Things may be different now, but in the past, people would look down on you if you told them you sold ice cream. Chon said. I don't feel any particular way about the industry dying out, it's just the way it is.